So you like Fletcher Henderson. Here are four facts that you need to know. Fletcher Henderson valued education and culture. In 1897, he was born in Georgia to a middle-class African-American family that put tremendous focus on education and cultural development. He began taking classical piano lessons at age six, and his parents made him practice diligently. In college, Henderson studied chemistry and mathematics, graduating from Atlanta University in 1920 and headed north to continue his studies and find work in the field of chemistry. But when Henderson arrived in New York City, he realized the color of his skin would be a barrier to jobs in that field. So Henderson switched his career focus to music and later found work as a Sessions pianist for the Black Swan Record Company. At the time, session musicians usually worked on a freelance basis, playing with live performances and recordings. They had to learn music quickly and be able to sight read charts. Henderson excelled at these skills and found himself in demand around the city. Number two, Fletcher Henderson shifted the focal point of jazz from Chicago to New York. Fletcher Henderson was responsible for bringing Louis Armstrong from Chicago to New York in October 1924, thus flipping the focal point of jazz in the history of the United States. Henderson differed from other musicians in his time. He made the idea of playing jazz exclusively popular to ambitious young black musicians. He made it financially stable and a way to seize cultural power during the time. Henderson was genuine when it came to the appearance of the band. He was all for making an impact on the era. He would intensely see to it that each member had a clean shaven face, a tuxedo, and polished shoes. It was recorded that he would do this before every performance. The men in his band had strong connections to the emerging groups of blacks in Harlem. Henderson created a band that was capable of playing dance music and complex arrangements. Lewis Metcalf said the sight of Fletcher Henderson's men playing behind music stands brought on a learning to read music kick in Harlem, which hadn't cared before it. Lewis Metcalf again said, there were two years of real concentration. Everybody greeted you with, how studying? Number three, Fletcher Henderson established a new formula for swing music. Henderson's orchestra included a brilliant array of musicians from trumpeters Louis Armstrong and Roy Eldridge to saxophonists Coleman Hawkins and Benny Carter. The band reached new heights of popularity and could be heard everywhere on radio and touring coast to coast. When Henderson met his musical partner, saxophonist and arranger Don Redman, together the two created an innovative and dynamic new concept that would become the standard for big bands. The rhythm section was established as piano, bass, guitar, and drums, and the trumpet, trombone, and reed sections composed the front line. According to historian Gunther Schuler, they wanted to make the sound bigger and fuller and richer with more colors. Arrangements were constructed in the call-response manner. The brass section calls, the reed section responds and many tunes were based upon riffs, identifiable musical passages repeated throughout the song. After Redmond left the band in 1927, Henderson used the same approach in his own arrangements. Number four, Fletcher Henderson arranged for many of Benny Goodman's biggest hits. Henderson was a superb arranger, but he was a poor businessman. Although the band had played major venues and been heard on the radio and in recordings, the band's finances were frequently in disarray and musicians often left without notice to join other bands. He nevertheless managed to keep his band going until the mid-1930s, at which time he sold many of his arrangements to Benny Goodman, who used them to define the sound of his new band. King Porter Stomp, Down South Camp Meetin', Bugle Call Rag, Sometimes I'm Happy, and Wrapping It Up, are among the Henderson arrangements that became Goodman hits. Through the Goodman band, Henderson's arrangements became a blueprint for the sound of the swing era. Other arrangers, including Henderson's brother Horace, also contributed to the big band sound of the 1930s. 
Henderson arranged for Goodman for several years and formed a short-lived band of his own in 1936 that included Roy Eldridge, Chew Berry, John Kirby, and Sid Catlett. That year, Henderson issued Christopher Columbus, which became the biggest hit released under his own name. Henderson had little success in his subsequent attempts to organize bands and spent most of the 1940s arranging for Goodman, Count Basie, and others. How do I do fast swing outs? How do I practice when I don't have a partner? How do I do the like scissor kick thing? How do I get better if I'm a follower? How do I get better if I'm a leader? Charleston, Wendy Hawk, how does it work? Tell me! <laughs> swing dancing isn't hard. Take over 20 of my swing dance lessons below and learn how to become the dancer everyone wants to dance with. See you in class. Thank <laughs> you.